Hey everybody, it's David R. Becker here with Becker Art, and today I'm going to do a demonstration that I have a, don't have the right answer to. <laughs> I don't have an answer to. Uh, so basically what I'm going to do here today is I want to do a painting for that somebody had um, given me, a friend had given me, uh, that was on a workshop and was doing a plein air. And then I took the photo and I was going to do it in my studio. And now I'm wondering, do you use the colors that are in the actual photo or when you're out there, is that something that you normally would do? Um, or can you change things? And as an artist, can you change it to where you want it to be more dramatic or maybe make it so that you feel that you don't want to do a blue sky? And so let me just show you really quickly what I'm talking about. So here's the image uh, a friend of mine, Maria, um, had um, sent me or given me to use. And um, it's a shot there was a video and then they the the workshop did this scene at more of a urban sketching type of thing and um and i'm not so much an urban sketcher as i am a painter and i was just wondering to myself and um i was going to ask some questions to maria is and uh, to the group any any group out there what is the kind of um <laughs> plan of attack that when people are out there do if the colors are not kind of like melding together as nicely as you think they could be with something other colors would you as an artist change it or do you when you're out there um, playing or sketching or even just um, urban sketching do you exactly try to go for the colors that are out there that's such a question i'm going to put it up to many of um, you viewers um, let me know I, i'd like to know what um i don't have the answer for that i just don't know i personally sometimes when i'm out there and i'm in, out there in the middle of the day i feel that the colors are not exactly what I want. It's not dramatic. I like dramatic dramatic scenes in my thing. So do you make it more dramatic than what it is? Or do you stick with what it is and just find something that's more dramatic and uh, make it so that, you know, I know I, I usually make the backgrounds, like the backgrounds in this area. Let me just show you the background. Like back here, I may make that lighter, even though it is darker. Um, or you can see it very clearly, but in that's a little bit different from what I'm talking about where the color scheme I'm looking for the color scheme Do you use the color scheme that's out there? And if the color scheme is not good, do you go with that or do you kind of change it up and make it your own? Um, I'm gonna probably go with these colors and I'm gonna do a little fast demonstration with the colors that are there But changing it up a little bit, you know, just so that it still be a blue sky um, but I'm going to probably make the sun a little bit different area, make something a little bit brighter like in here. See, I'm going to put the, here there is no sun right there. I'm going to make it really bright so the sun is kind of there blurring out this area. And then I'm a little bit lower in the sky than, you know, here it's way up in the sky, you know, probably noontime. And so here um, you don't get many shadows. And so I'm going to pull more shadows on this. And so let me just show you my tabletop here and just show you what I'm going to be doing. So here you can see I threw in a little bit more shadowing and I'm going to make this area right here a little bit lighter and hoping that I just give it a little more drama than what's in there because middle of the day is I've always find to be the least dramatic part of the day because the shadows are not long like in the morning or in the evening sun sunrise and sunsets it's just very dramatic and so I want to make it more maybe um, either sunrise or sunset but not so much that you know, it's just dramatic, like at five o'clock in the summer, a lot of times when the sun is in your face, it gets very dramatic. And so I'm going to try to try to go more for that. So let's get started here and just show you what I'm going to be doing. Like I said, I will still be using blue, which I, you know, I would think a lot of times I would even like to change that to where it's more of a yellow sky and then go with yellows and violets. And uh, so basically I've got blue, green and red. And so you know maybe blue and orangey red maybe that could be my compliments and because the building itself is kind of orangey you know tan into the orange and so maybe i can do that but then it's got green um, on the rooftops here the copper roof so it looks like green and then the green trees so then it's green and red so i'm gonna make it kind of like maybe a turquoise sky and just kind of go with that and let's just see let's just try something so that's very interesting to see if like these plein air artists and the and the urban sketchers if they really just go for whatever's out there exactly what's out there and um if you are one of those people and um you are doing this a lot please let me know i would love to hear from you and love to know what your thought is on that and um and um yeah what you think about it so here i'm wetting my surface 
and I'm wetting around the towers because if you look in my value study right here, this value study right there, the sky is darker than uh, the parts of the, it almost looks like snow on there, but it's just really bright um, and darker blue. But again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this area a lot lighter, light blue. And so that's where kind of the sun is almost right there. It's almost right there. And I went right into the tower, which I said I wasn't going to do, but <laughs> oh well. And so I'm just going to mix my blue, and my ultramarine blue together. And then again, make this area a little bit lighter. I can take it right into the trees because the trees will be darker. So I can go right there. The building itself, I'm going to try to make a little bit in my value study. Let me see. I actually don't need this camera right in my way at the moment. And so... See, I've got this little right over here, and so I'm just going to make that light and just make it light as it comes down. It gets a little bit darker, but then more vibrant. And so maybe I'll make it a little bit more vibrant down here, the blue. And it is kind of, I'm making it a little bit more turquoise-like blue, just so that I'm going into the bluish part of green. You know, it's more of a blue-green. And so I'm just kind of melding this down here, making it kind of bright right there. And my sky is going to be a little bit brighter than it is in the photo, only because again I'm bringing the I'm bringing the the light down a little bit. I'm bringing it lighter. I must I, I've got to say. And so that's pretty dark blue right there. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm doing there. <laughs> so here we go. We're putting this in, kind of going around. I could put masquoid fluid, masking fluid on that kind of parts, but I, I'm not going to. I'm just going to let that be a little bit more. This is more of a sketch anyways, and so we'll try to get this done in less than an hour. Just so it's more of a more of a sketch than that, like in-studio type of painting. And it is, you know, a um, video that I'm making for you guys. So um, I usually tend to don't work as careful and I try to get a little bit done. It's more about the um, lesson than it is about creating a great, great painting that you're going to be using to maybe as a commission or whatever, or just painting in your studio. And, and the fact that when you're painting by yourself without cameras, it's a little bit different than when you're painting to teach. And so I'm going to go against these buildings here because they are a little bit lighter than the sky. And so um, I don't have to go into the down here because these are, these are trees that are going to be, I want to have a little bit of that color from the trees and the sky into the trees. I could put um, clouds in this, but I've got so much I'm going around that I'm just going to kind of um, leave the clouds out. I don't need clouds right now. And as it goes away from the sun, it gets darker. And the water and watercolor helps you bleed all that away. Or lets you make your surfaces nice and soft. Soft edges happen on their own because that's what watercolor does when you use and float your pigment into some water. So it goes from light, and let's go a little bit darker on this side. A little bit darker. I have to thank uh, Maria again for um, allowing me to use her photographs. And um, uh, this is one of the towns. This is in Prague. She's taking a workshop at Urban Sketching Workshop with Ian Fenley, Fenley or something like that his name is. And, um, you know, so... This is, um, I'm almost like vicariously living through her workshop. <laughs> so it's actually kind of fun. Um, I've seen their, their work that they're doing and it's super great. And so I'm just kind of like following along and want to see what I'm learning myself about what um, planar painters do, you know, and urban sketch painters, urban sketchers, uh, how they work and how they operate. So now within, the, within this large area of sky that's going to be done, now I'm going to go down into here and right away get my ground worked in there. It's more of a gray, and so, but a lot of the blue will be in there. So how do you gray down blue? You can take a little bit of violet. I always use a little bit of violet. And then um, opposite of blue is orange, so a little bit of orange will gray it down. And so I'm just going to go down here, gray down my blue that I used in the sky. Might as well use it because that's what's going to be reflecting into the street. And then, why am I using such a small brush? And so then go in and use its complement, orange, to dull it down a little bit. And then I will keep it some of it light, but then 
there's gonna be shadows in here right away. So first I put down the color that I want. And I was even thinking of making it streets wet because you can do that because maybe it had rained like um, a few minutes before I did this plain air sketch. <laughs> See, that's another thing. I'm always wondering about plain air painters and urban sketchers if they are true to what's out there or can you embellish? Can you embellish on your things? Can you take and and make the street wet even though it is not wet? You know, because sometimes I like just that look of a wet street and so I am planning to attend a lot more plain air fest and so I'm just wondering it's one of those things you wonder if that's frowned upon or is that a cool thing is that an okay thing to do so here now I've got my street and now I'm gonna right away put my um, dark values my my what you call it my um, shadows I'm just gonna put the shadows into these parts that are in there because I want these soft edged and so why not put them in right now no time is now no time is getting it in right when you right when you can now there'll be soft edge but that's what I want I want a soft edge for my shadows you can also do hard edges and you know then again I was thinking okay do we put it make it wet if it's wet then these images above it would have like a little bit of dark so I'm just going to take my dirty palette and my, I never clean my palette because of that reason so I can use these dark dark colors here and I'm just going to put some um, reflections and actually sometimes asphalt and even cement gets so hot and um it actually reflects because it's like um, cement is kind of glass right or it's like a glass so sometimes it gets so hot it almost reflects stuff from above it and definitely definitely asphalt sometimes it's shiny and so it will be shiny and then reflect a little bit of uh, reflection and that's different from a shadow a reflection is just a reflection into the street a shininess that's going into the street and so I might as well put that in there too. Again, I'm just trying to be dramatic. You know, I was trying to make something a little bit better than what it is. I feel as an artist, that's kind of like that. I, I enjoy making things look more dramatic than they are. Now, some people would say, well, this is a foreground. How about making it warmer? I could do that, but I'm kind of just trying to feel it out. And if it is kind of a wet, a wet street, it also would be like reflecting the sky like um, water does. Water reflects the sky. So you can have a little bit of both. So maybe I'll put a little bit of warmth in there too. A little red in there and then just a little warm in there. All right, so that's my big area of my sky and my and my, and my foreground, the, the, the um, cement and sidewalks and all that. And now let's Now let's go right into our big area of our light. I mean, we got to put the light in our building. And so that is sort of a orangey, orangey tan. Though I'm not going to make it just one color. I'm going to go in there. And the one side can be a little bit blue and gray. The parts that are in the shadow. You know, I can do that. I can flow that in there. And the opposite side can be a little bit more vibrant orange than it actually is in the photo. But um, again, I'd be one. I'd be very interested to know if that you are looking and trying to emulate exactly what's out there when you're out there. And a lot of times when I am out there, sometimes I, I definitely try to do that. I try to get the colors, but I'm still trying to get a beautiful wash and make a beautiful painting. So I've learned as an artist that a lot of times if it's not like a certain thing, you can use artistic license and make it whatever you wanted to make it. So there's where I find it very interesting because when you're out plein air painting, you're seeing exactly what's out there. In the photograph, it's whatever the developer used and what kind of paper they use for developing or even on our screen, our monitors have a certain color in them, you know, more bluish or you, know, you can even adjust that on your TV. Like, can you make it more a movie or more this and that? And so it's not exactly what it is in real nature. In nature with you sitting out there and seeing exactly what's out there. Very interesting. And so this and the rooftops here are the, um, the light greens, almost this composed green. And so I'm just gonna put that in there right away. It's like a light, light, super light copper green that like when copper gets um, tarnished, I guess, and it gets kind of greenish. And so I have the perfect color for that, which is composed green. And again, I'm using Holbein colors. That's my to-go-to colors. 
only because they never dry out and they, I don't ever waste. And I tell my students they never waste any paint because they don't dry out to hard clumps, hard rocks. Now this little thing right over here is reddish, more of a red. And I'm gonna make it more of an orange though, more of an orangey red because I'm using a lot of blue in the sky. And this building up and here, same thing. A nice, nice top of blue. I said blue. The sky is blue, but the rooftop is a little bit orange. And then along here, I'm just going to randomly put some red because I know there's a couple of building tops there. And also behind these trees, there was, and I could tell, I can't tell in the photograph, but there is a little rooftop there of red. And I'll put that in because there's going to be a, the trees going to be a lot darker. And so I can just have that peeking through here and there. So a tree shouldn't be a big clump of dark without being able to see through. Some parts you can see through a little bit. And so there we have, and look at the sun, how bright it is on there right now. Isn't that great? You know, so the top of the trees, I'm going to put some on the top of the trees, use some of that same green in this area right here, use that because then it'll have that same look like it's shining right there. And so that's kind of made up because that's not in the photograph. So there is, there's the first step I'm taking where I'm taking my artistic license and making it you know, actually, no, it's a second because I put the light here first and now I'm putting a light here. So it's just shining a little bit closer down. So is that okay? That's the question. That's the question for today. <laughs> and so here, these buildings are again, light and they will be light. And so I'm going to get them in first. I mean, you always got to get them in first and then you put, draw the darker over that, make it darker over that. And even though it is just one color, like on the photograph, I like to reflect other colors within that. So maybe some of that red I used in it, maybe they can reflect on here. They can reflect into the side of the building there, right? You never know. It's like, that's what happens with reflective color. So here we have a little bit of light and a lot of people, if it is white, they want to keep it white, the, the paper, that's great too. Like if the building is actually white, then yes, go ahead, make it white. Now I'm going to go here now and use a little bit of violet lavender. A little lavender here and this is going to be a little bit darker now going back and it's not as dark as the trees so i'm going to make it just a little bit lighter than the trees the, the trees are going to be pretty dark here but back here i'm going to let it fit, fall back and if i were sitting there right now i know that wouldn't be that way um i know that when you're out, outdoors you see things as they are you know you see it very vibrant your eyes are so miraculous that you're going to put things everything into vision and into detail because that's what your eyes do. Your, your eyes are so as good as a camera, if not better. And you can see way back there, I, I guess every person has a little different vision, but <laughs> I always had really good vision. So I could see way back there, I could see what's happening. And then it'd be really, you know, really tight. You could make it really tight, but really you shouldn't. That's gotta fall back, right? It's gotta fall back. Like, like this has gotta stand back there. And so the, how do you make things fall back? One of the things is to make it grayer less of, excuse me, less contrasty. That's another thing, way of doing it, make it less contrasty, grayer colors. And so this building is pretty much white. And so, but if I make this building too white now, and then this building is less white, then you're gonna be looking over here. So I'm gonna take the artistic license and tone this one down a little bit and make you not see it as much. It's gonna be still a white building, but it'll be a little bit in shadow, not shadow, but it'll just be a little bit darker because I don't want your eye to come over here. I will put a little bit of this, some reflected color in there too. What the heck? All right. And then I'm gonna go in here and start putting in some more darks. And I'm gonna put them right over the people because the people, if they do have a little bit of light on them and they have to put, I didn't put masking fluid on anything, I will just peel it out or like pick it up out of there. So there's my lights, guys. See how my lights are all working pretty nicely here. I put a few of the dark reflections, but they can be, the dark shadows can be harder edge. So I'm just putting anything that's gonna be soft and a big areas of lights and darks. And usually when you get to the bottom of the buildings, they usually reflect the, the bottom the street into that and so as it goes up it gets lighter the buildings a lot of times the dirtiness comes from just actually on the bottom <laughs> um, actually dirt getting on the side of the building and up there you don't get as much of the dirt on the buildings it sounds weird but that happens 
and all the rain, like if, and especially like in Venice where it floods and you get all the things in the bottom of the buildings getting all flooded and they always get worked at and stuff. And so, all right, so there's my lights, guys. Now let's go to our darks, right away into our darks. And so I did not time this, so hopefully I will not take too long to do this painting. So now I'm going to go in here with my dark trees and just right away put in my dark trees just the way they are. And this is still wet, but that's okay because I want a soft edge here anyways. This is the back. This is back there. So I'm taking a dark, a dark blue, mixing with cronacrum gold, and then a little bit of orange or red to make it dull it down. And this is just a pretty dark. Might as well put a little bit of ultramarine blue in there too, because since that's what the sky color is, a little ultramarine blue. And just make this nice and dark. This side I'm gonna make a little bit lighter, just a little bit lighter green. Why? Because again, <clears throat> excuse me, the, because the sun is right there and actually maybe hitting a little portion of this tree right there. And so I'll do the top of the heads of some of these people and that way they could be negative painted. And then I just look for the big areas. I don't really look for detail, detail. It's too, it's too small to be able to go in there and get individual things happening back there. Just individual pieces are left left for later. If you need details, but right now just big areas. Big areas underneath the door here is kind of dark. All right, and these are again, again soft edges because why? Because I didn't have a chance to let it dry. And so I'm just keep on going here and I'm just going to keep on getting some dark green and just going to put that in here. And um, I wet it as I go along too. It's dry paper. So I get a hard edge in the bottom here on the top here. It's still a little damp. So you're going to maybe get a little bit of the soft edges, but I'm kind of wetting as I go along here. There are some street, there's street lights right here that um, are going to be lights. So maybe go around those. Let's get a little bit more of that green. Put it into the water now. Let's get some of these dark, dark. Let's get some dark, dark greens in here. And go down to, they're a little bit too, too vibrant, the green for me. So I'm going to dull them down a little bit with a little bit of red. A little bit of red. And I always notice there's a lot of orange and green out there. So orange and green make a great kind of grayish green. And I can tap it like this to get more of a, more of a texture of the leaves on the edges. Inside here, it doesn't really matter so much. You really don't see what's going on inside, but the outer outer edge is very important to make it look like the trees. You gotta make it look like branches and tree branches and leaves out there. And around these little lights right there. Tree trunks. Let's just make it really dark. I can even just use like a brown, make black with orange. It's kind of a brown and I'm gonna go in here and just make some of the trunks of the trees. And then right down to the bottom here, where there's there's the park probably, and there are probably bushes right there. So again, we can go in here, go up around, just make it dark. You know, I'll go around these two people just so they keep them lighter and make this darker. Here's a couple people. I'll leave them alone. Keep on going. A couple more trunks of the trees. Here we can even make it dark, like there's. The bushes are really high over here. Go around this guy's head maybe. And then you can make, you know, texture in there too. And it, and it can make it pretty dark too. Don't be afraid of your darks. You know, when you want to get them dark, just get in there. The darker your darks are, the more your lights will look vibrant. And your colors will really pop if you make these darks really not so colorful either. Just nice and I just wrote in my newsletter about blacks and you know there's times when you can use black if you want it super super dark just use black right out of the tube and you can put a color into it also all right and so there's our dark and then we're gonna go 
and right into our people now because that's the only thing that's left is the people and then details detail darks and back here is not gonna be as um dark back here well actually it is it's gonna make some darks around this making this a negative painted area and then just make it look like people in front are lighter and so we have the people right so let's take our small round brush here <clears throat> and just start working on our large people and and then in the time that that's happening i can then later on go in here and get my detailed darks for my windows and all that stuff on the buildings and back here that's going to be almost left the way it is with just a little bit more blue from the background and just get that to be darks but first let's just go in here and start working our people and so maybe um i do i usually do the torsos first i give like the torso a color you know i give like here and maybe this i'm still i start with one color maybe there's a red i go into like a blue maybe here this will be a little blue in there and because the people usually have more color on than what the buildings are and so there's where you get some of your color and not so uh, not everybody has you know that then we can do dark pants and you don't want to make it so obvious that something so different in color that it stands out like a sore thumb and now we got the horses in here that are actually white horses and so i'm just going to tan them up a little bit and then uh, i'll just get a couple of legs here and there's the cart and again this is a sketch and so i'm not going to go crazy with the drawing here though i did pretty pretty detailed drawing here but then there's like the wheels two wheels and it's dark things like the heads and harness and stuff like that that's almost too too little to see at, at the moment and so we're just not going to go in there and get all that stuff we're just gonna a gesture of people is what you're doing here we can do some heads and even um, these are i call these bob's blobs robert wade um, taught me how to do bob's blobs i call them david's dabs when i'm in my classroom and um the little torso the little carrot stick legs on them and again this is such a small painting that i don't need to go in there and you know get the color of the guy's hair and <laughs> i mean just gotta get the overall area you know it's a it's a sketch a sketch of what's happening in the area and now since i've got the rest of these people over here here's some these pillars that are just in the side of the street so that the cars don't drive into this area i'll make them a little bit orange they can be dark on one side and then of course we'll do more of a texture or not a texture but a um well here's a lamp post and i don't have something to scrape with right now hmm. i could scrape a light in there or just rub it out later because i can do something also do it lighter the pole instead of darker and i just put paint in my eye <laughs> okay that's interesting Maybe this guy's pointing and and then we're gonna have this guy over here has a backpack on give him kind of an orange shirt he's got his arm down this way and then we got some blue jeans on him you know blue jeans a lot of people wear blue jeans so it's an easy that's an easy thing to think about and and if you have a picture with a lot of people in it you know actually draw some of those people exactly what they're doing you know um if, and i'm thinking if you're out there on the spot doing negative or doing a plein air painting or sketching i like to what i like to do is um take a couple shots and then when a person's walking by then later on go to that picture that photo because you know that person has walked away but if you get a really quick image of them you always have your camera ready so that somebody when it walks into your scene if you want to get them into the scene you know right away take a picture and then just draw them in and then you'll have a little reference to what what they did and where they are and i mean they they did were they were in the scene at one point but they're not going to pose for you unless you can paint the pose then i guess you're okay there and so i'm getting these darks in here wall there so little by little see how it's coming together it's just um, little by little 
Now we're gonna get, the, now let's do the building, get the building done. And then we do the shadows, right? And so let me start from the background. We'll work the background first. I always like to work back from back to front. So back here, I'm just gonna kind of make this more blue, kind of fall into the background. And um, so that it doesn't come forward. I don't want it to, I want it to look like in the background. Now I'll put these trees darker in front of it. Now let's do that with right now while it's soft edged and that way soft edges also will bring it back instead of making it hard edged and that that's just one of those things you can do so as it comes forward here i'm just going to get a little bit darker more hard edged more colorful as you come forward and then if you look at my if you look at the photograph here let me just pull this up if you look at the photograph let me show you this real quick so right here and here, look how dark all this is. And right in there, so as you come forward, if you did it all dark and it wouldn't fall back as much if you make everything dark. So what I'm doing is I'm just making that lighter. And as I come up here, that'll be a little bit darker. Again, uh, that's, um, that's artistic license because the photograph sometimes doesn't give you exactly what you need to do as an artist to make things fall back and come forward. Here's a shadow underneath this rim right here. I would like to put a little bit of um, orange underneath an eave. I was taught that by Irving Shapiro. Always said, put a little orange in that eave and it'll make the ground from the ground up. Get a little bit of orange in there. It does help it a lot, I must say. It really works out, works wonders. I'm just taking a nice darks here now. And here's a window, nice dark window. And now when I start working buildings, I like to work with a flat brush because many things are rectangular on a building. And so a rectangular brush works so much better than a round brush. So a round brush doesn't give you a rectangle, instant rectangle, where um, a flat brush does. Instant rectangle by just, you know, here's an instant window, boom. Window, window, window. It may not be the exact width that you need, but um, and then you can use the point of it to make a line or the edge, the point of the edge, or, you know, you just get in there. And I'm going in with like a violet -y color, a little bit of blue. Blue from the sky will also be underneath there. Now this whole side here is a little dark. And I always like to put just any color down, then wet it, and then float other colors in that. I'm a really big opponent of floating your colors. Why float your colors? Because they do their own beautiful thing when they're set into water and they look very transparent, look very fresh and they will just do their thing. They'll float there for you and they'll give you this beautiful watercolor look. It's just a wonderful thing. And also you never have to soften an edge when you do that. It just it automatically stays beautiful. Here's a little window. Oh no, that's not a window. That was just a thing. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter. Just going to put some things in here. Side this here a little bit and I try to pull things together. This background doesn't need to be so detailed that you can see everything in it. We want to keep our center of interest, which is this building and this little section right here. Maybe I'll put a really nice red right here. And just that way you get to look at that area. And then we'll go in here. Let's see, let's get our towers done here. Up here, we're gonna get our towers done. And so that's really dark up here. I notice the towers are kind of dark and they have a little bit of light, but pretty much dark. And a lot of times I just pick up all the colors and mix them to get a nice gray. And that's always a way of getting it dark too, instead of picking up exactly the color, but just go in your palette with all the colors you've been using and that you're, you're gonna mix to something really dark because all these colors are in your palette, are there because you already put them onto the painting. So you're probably gonna get a pretty decent color out of those colors. And this whole side of the building is nice and dark here. Okay, this goes up and down. Kind of confusing because I haven't have it drawn perfect. So I'm kind of making this up a little bit here. And on the side here, let's see, we have a 
a little sculpture here, a little statue. And got some darks coming down. And then again, once it's wet, don't don't just leave it. Apply other colors in there. Let other colors float in there. Put a little reflected of blue that's from the sky and, and all kinds of things that you can let's just let float in there. Things float around a lot when it comes into the um, the lights and darks in your colors. Here in the middle, there's a there's a nice window there. Just put it dark. Looks like we have a dark. This is very dark over here. And sometimes when you're drawing and sketching um, on your pic picture, you can put in like a little a light tinge of um, graphite to let yourself know that that is um, going to be a dark area. I do that sometimes myself to where I just I put a little bit of like a little cross hatching in the area with my pencil just to kind of make me know that that area right where I'm penciling right at that moment is going to be a nice um, dark area. Little tricks you can do just to give yourself informed about when you put in the dark lights and darks. Another statue here, another statue right there. And I probably shouldn't make them as light. Here, I don't know what this all is, but I'm just kind of making it up as I go along here. <laughs> And then also a lot of times there will be shadows underneath some of these places, you know, and so I will take a little bit of the orange and I'll just make the, the, the parts that look more tan. I'll make them a little bit more orangey and a little bit darker than what it is just to make it look, look more dramatic and get some more of a shadow in those areas down here, especially because this is kind of all in shadow underneath these trees. Maybe just a little bit of the shadowing down there. And then maybe a little bit blue. So it looks like it's in the distance. You can see a little in distance blue. See, when you put down blue, it's going to it's gonna say, hey, that's the background. The background is blue. And so anything you put back here that's blue, and even down here, will give you the impression that, oh, yeah, that means background. I'm going to put um, windows in here. And then here we got some nice details in this building right here because it's pretty much front and center here. And so let's get those a little bit nicer. Spend some time on that. Get a little drawing in there. There's a few lines coming down, like pillars going down. And so, and then also give it a little bit more color. I'm gonna put a little red in the window, a little warmth. Make this a little bit more dramatic, that rooftop. And also contrast, I can get a little bit more contrast in certain spots right here. Why? Because again, this is my center of interest, so I can make things a little bit more dramatic right here. Right there. Now let's go over here and get to the part of this windows and just, just kind of faking this in a little bit here. And as you notice, I'm using a blue color, cool color. That way it won't come forward. It'll sit back there. And I'll make these windows a little bit darker in the bottom. Now let's put some shadow into the street. And then we're almost done, guys. I'm going to put some shadows and some legs here. And I will probably be using a little bit of white because I didn't put any mask white down. So if I need to get some lights back, um, it's nice just to do that with white paint. Like if you need to get in there and get some things that look a little bit lighter than they should or got didn't get too dark, I want to lighten them up again. That's fine. You can do that. Just take white paint. There's no rule that says you can't use white paint in watercolor. There is a rule for some of the watercolor societies that they made up that they make up and so that you have to follow those but in general you can use whatever you want to make the paint look good so i'm going in here now and putting these shadows across here 
Make sure there'd be a lot of shadows here because all these trees would be causing shadows, right? And let's get some more violet -y shadows going through here. I'd like to get them a little bit more violet in the foreground here. And these will be a little bit longer. There can be some from back here somewhere that there may be a tree back here that's pulling in some of the shadows. And you're allowed to do that. Just bring them in from, you know, over here that this guy maybe just is part of the shadow, but then there's also more shadows in this corner. And again, let's put a little bit more of the, the reflections in the street again, too. I, I like that. Just a little bit of reflections in the street here, making it look wet. And I find that to be just super fine. And also there's a lot of times there's marking in the streets and um, use that. that there may be a um, trolley car or there may be um, pavers in the street and you can just put those in, you know, with little touches like this. Maybe grates in the street. And these lamps are just a little bit too bright right here. So I'm going to put a little blue in them. And I will take a really dark, dark. I will take a liner brush now. And we're almost done, guys. So here I'm going to put the, a little bit of um, a little bit of the pole going down. Nice and dark. Here on this side too. Some stripes on this guy, a little bit more darker right here. Because this is our center of interest. And maybe put a pole right here too. A few of the lights in over here, even though they're not in the photograph, but we're allowed to do anything we want when it comes to that. And, um, I mean, it is nice to see when, when I see people who do outdoor painting, plein air, and they come really close to what it is out there. That's very cool. But is it, you know, is it the way that you should do everyone or, or is it okay to differ from that sometimes? Let me know. I'm dying to know that. I'm not, I just been starting to do the plein air painting. So I'd like to know what the, um, the painters do and the urban sketchers, what they actually do. One of those things that I'm trying to join in on, in the, on, on the fun. And so I want to do it right. Like they do it. All right. And so there we have it guys. I think we're going to be calling it quits in this. Oh, let me just put one more thing here. A nice dark and the dark and dark in the shadow. And see, this is just the side there. And I think I yeah, put a, a white panel in front of it so we can see it because I don't ha I didn't do this um, on a board. 300 pound um, stone hinge. And I think that is going to be it. Let me make my shadows a little bit darker in this corner. I want to make it really pop out there. So let's get some blues and some purple and really emphasize the shadowing going across here. Just let that bleed into the background or into the foreground, I mean. Same thing with this guy, can have some shadowing. If you're going to put them in, might as well put them in. Put them in direct and really try to get some look of the shadowing. All right. Let me stand up and see what it looks like. I think there we have it, guys. Let me find a sheet of white board that we can put underneath there to see what it looks like on a clean surface. There we have it, guys. Clean surface. Prague, Prague and the Czech Republic. And so thank you, Maria, for lending me this image. And um, I hope you all learned something. And hopefully I will learn something in the near future about what to do as a plein air painter. Oh, one more thing here. I just saw this. I want a little bit more of a shadow coming across here. There we go. Thanks a lot, guys.
Um, follow me on my YouTube channel and then my Facebook page and all those things that you see in social media. I have most of all of them. So just go over there and sign up and subscribe. And um, I also do a paint along every Thursday at 6.30 Central Standard Time where in my, in my newsletter on Tuesdays, I let you know what we're painting on Thursdays. All right, so until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.